the book for this book club is the 12 week year, get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's dig in. So what you will get by reading this book, this book is a how to book for individuals and organizations for how to take back control of your day, how to increase your income, how to balance the priorities in your life, how to lower your stress and accomplish your goals in record time. The first thing this book presents is the fact that most of us are living two lives. The first one is the life we actually live. And the second one is the life that we are capable of living. And so you can sit there and ask yourself right now, if you could fully tap into your potential, what might be different about you? All right, and they say the biggest differentiator for living the first version of your life and living the second version is execution and consistent execution on a few critical tasks. So as the title of the book indicates, we are discarding annualized thinking and we are bringing in this concept of a 12 week year. And in a 12 week year, each week becomes more important and each day becomes more important. A quote from the book is, year end acts like a line in the sand. Wouldn't it be great if we could feel that energy, commitment and focus all year round? So if you think about New Year's Eve in a traditional 12 month year, and a lot of people make New Year's resolutions, they're reflecting back on the year, they are maybe looking forward to the new year because it's a clean slate and a clean break and a breath of fresh air. They say, if, if you could feel like that all year round, wouldn't that be great? What would, it, what would it do for you? What would it do for the things that you could accomplish? At the beginning of the book, they also talk about the importance of an emotional connection. So you can't just be checking stuff off a list or you can't just be a really good uh, keeper of tasks and executor of tasks. You have to have an emotional connection to your goals. And the first part of that is setting a vision. So they say vision is the starting point for all high performance. And one thing I really love about this book is they outline how to shift your mindset from thinking something is impossible, like this is never going to happen, so why even try, to this is a given, and of course it's going to happen because it is happening. And they move you through these steps from impossible to possible. It's, it's possible, it's a thing, it's in the realm of possibilities. And then from possible to probable, it's probably going to happen, and then probable to it's a given. So to get from impossible to possible, they suggest, they say, don't ask how. So how am I going to do this thing? This thing seems overwhelming and daunting and impossible. How am I ever going to do this? Instead, ask, what if? What if I did this? What if I would after this? What if I attained this? Then to get from possible to probable, you would ask, how might I? How might I do this? How might I think about this? How might I approach this? And then from probable to it's a given is when you actually begin implementing a plan. So when you've strategized your plan and you've thought about it and you actually begin executing toward it, it's, it's a given because you're doing it and that's the kind of person you are. A quote from the book is, in our experience, the number one thing that you will have to sacrifice to be great, to achieve what you are capable of, and to execute your plans is your comfort. You have to be willing to sacrifice your comfort. And we've talked about this theme on the podcast several times. Guests have mentioned it. I've gone over pieces of it in solo episodes. And it's this willingness to go after things that are uncomfortable, to stay on your growth edge. So being comfortable with being uncomfortable and knowing going into these things that to achieve great things and to maximize your potential, you have to be willing to sacrifice your comfort. The 12 week year strategy is more than a glorified to-do list. So we're talking about strategic action and strategic activities. And a great phrase that I love, love, love out of this book is high value actions. And I've used this with chiefs of staff, with executives, with myself. I ask clients, what are your high value actions? What are your high value activities? What are your highest value actions and activities to get them to kind of think about things in a new way? You want to be spending the majority of your time in these high value action areas. A quote from the book is, it's not enough to be busy. So are the ants. The question is, 
what are we busy about? So what are you busy about? If someone were to watch your actions and they couldn't read your mind, which is everyone, by the way, <laughs> what would people think that you're about? All right, so let's get into the tactical, practical um, planning part. So we're gonna develop our 12 week plan. We have 12 weeks and we're gonna select one to three goals. So one to three goals that we're gonna tackle in this 12 week period. And there's three primary components that go into this. So we're gonna be intentional about building in strategic blocks. Strategic blocks are three hour blocks of uninterrupted time each week. So some people call this deep focus work or project work or deep think work, but a strategic block is three, is three hours of uninterrupted time each week. The second component is buffer blocks. So this is time to deal with unplanned and low value activities. And there is a sense of batching these together. So do these things all at once. So your brain is focused on those types of activities and you can knock them out faster in your buffer blocks. The third primary component is breakout blocks. So these are three hour blocks of time where you do something else other than work each week. So something outside of work, a hobby, um, hanging out with family and friends, just something that takes you out of that work mode and you're deliberate about doing that with your breakout blocks. Okay, so then we go into each week. At each week, we have a game plan going into the week and then we have a weekly scorecard. So we're literally saying, how did I do that week? Am I moving closer to my goals? Am I executing to my plan well? Or did it deviate? And if so, why? And then you also have a weekly scorecard. So we, as humans, like keeping score. We like watching sports. We like seeing ourselves progress. And a part of, and a fun way to do that is a scorecard. The term that I really liked from the book here is day tight compartments. Day tight compartments. So we think about the 12 week year. Now we're moving into the, the week time period and saying game plan and scorecard each week. And then they mention, and now we're working with day tight compartments. So each day has a lot of weight to it. And each day has a, you, you can make a big difference if you optimize and maximize that day. So I kind of like getting up and saying, okay, this is my day tight compartment. What are you going to do with it? Okay, so we're tracking actions weekly. Examples of actions you could track. If you are trying to lose weight, for instance, you could say, I'm gonna do 20 minutes of cardio five times a week, or I'm gonna train with weights three times a week, or I'm gonna drink six glasses of water each day. And so you track that through your week and then you give yourself a score on those things. At the end of a week long period, you're gonna have a weekly accountability meeting or WAMS, W-A-M, WAM, not to be confused with W-H-A-M, which is a something else entirely. Although you could play WAM in the background of your WAM meetings. And I feel like that would be a certain sense of irony. <laughs> um, and it would be a good place to start your week, maybe, if you're like, hey, I wanna get my, get my WAMs done and have WAM in the background and you're gonna get ready to go, go into your week, could be, could be fantastic that way. All right, so <laughs> weekly accountability meetings are where you take a look back and you say, all right, where did my plan break down? What happened there? And what can I do differently going forward? What went well and how can I celebrate my success around that? Even if it's just taking a moment saying, oh yeah, that did go pretty well. All right, let me not glaze over that. Let me actually say, all right, nope, that was a, that was a good accomplishment. And then, you encourage action going forward. So, okay, I'm going into my next week. What can I do to encourage myself and motivate myself going into this week and making each week and, make, and making each day count? One of the suggestions they have for WAMS is 15 to 30 minutes on Monday mornings. And they say, this is, this is flexible, it's customizable, whatever day or whatever time slot works best for you, but to build in a, a weekly accountability point. You can also have these whams, you can do them yourself and you could also have them with other people. So if you have a, a group of people who are at least going to support and encourage you or listen and give feedback on your whams, or you can go find a dedicated 12 week year wham group. And they have this online if you want to look for those. But if you're someone who's like, oh yeah, when I know I'm going to have to 
have my turn in a round robin with five, 10 other people and list off what I accomplished that week. That's really motivating to me. That holds me accountable. Then build in these wham pieces. Okay, so we have our 12 week year, we have our weekly plans, our weekly scorecard, we're tracking these, we're doing our whams to reflect back on what went well and what didn't. And we're going to run this cycle for 12 weeks for our full 12 week year. And then on the 13th week, we're going to do something different. So we're going to take a break, we're going to recharge. We're gonna look back and celebrate our wins. Oh my gosh, a whole new year ended and now a whole new year is gonna start. It's that breath of fresh air, it's that clean slate feeling. And your 13th week, you can do a week long vacation. So to literally somewhere else, a different destination. You could just have a three day weekend, maybe a long weekend. Anything you do, anything you can do to reflect, regroup and re-energize. And so at some point in the, in the 13th week, you'll review your work and then launch your next 12 week year. All right, so that's the tactical and practical framework or outline of how you put that together. Uh, important component the authors outline is this difference between interest and commitment. So you can be interested in something or you can be committed to something. And they say, you must be committed to your goals that emotional connection, and you must be committed to the process for it to work. And a really interesting part that they had in the book that I liked is knowing that commitment is a personal promise. And they asked this question, how good is your word? If you give someone your word that I'm going to do something, how good is that? Is it worth a lot or is it low credibility? And if you're making a commitment or a personal promise to yourself, how good is your word to yourself? So that one got my attention. I was like, ooh, how good is my word to myself? So it's having that high level commitment and, and clear intention to, to keep your word and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna be about. And I've given my word, I'm going to do this. A quote from the book about interest versus commitment is the chicken has contributed the egg and is therefore merely interested in the breakfast. The pig, however, contributes the bacon and is thus completely committed. So it's about being all in, being committed and being all in. Four other noteworthy quotes I wanna, I wanna highlight from the book. The first is, if you frequently defer strategic work to accomplish the urgent low value activities, you will never accomplish great things. Second one, in spite of the perceived benefits, people with a victim mindset pay a terrible price. A victim allows his success to be limited by external circumstances, people and events. Next one, if you're serious about your goals, take ownership. And the final one is accountability is not concerned with fault, but rather what it takes to create better results. All right, so your takeaways, how can you implement the 12 week year or elements of it for yourself, for your business or for your family? What or who can help you stay accountable? This can be family, friends, mentors, a group of colleagues, a coach, but who or what can help you stay accountable? All right, so I wanted to share some of my takeaways because I implemented several elements from this book. So the top three goals, high value activities that I have for my current 12 week year are number one, record the audible version of my book. So my last book, An Insider's Perspective on the Chief of Staff, has a paperback version, has a Kindle version, but I wanted to get an audible version out for people who consume information that way. And right now I'm about 50% done. So I have about half of it recorded. And this, this goal is kind of cool because it certainly ties to my business and my coaching and getting value out there and information out there about the role of Chief of Staff but it also ties into a personal goal I have, which is to challenge myself in terms of public speaking. And you might sit there and go, wait a minute, recording Audible is kind of the opposite of public speaking because <laughs> you're in a room by yourself and there's no people. Yet, for some reason, my brain kind of clicks over into, oh, this is gonna go out to people. This is a public speaking event and I get a little bit nervous. So I wanted to set myself the challenge to do an Audible book, to do more podcasts, to do more public speaking in that sense. And funny enough, if you do something over and over again, you get better at it. So that was a goal that hit kind of 
two birds with one stone. My second high value activity is to outline my online course. And I'm almost done with this. So I'm about 90% complete. And you'll notice it says outline my online course. So I'm developing a strategic planning course for executives and chiefs of staff to use. And it's not, um, it's not complete or draft or record, it's outline. That's a huge step because I'm researching a whole bunch of information and saying, okay, let me go over this component and that component and really learn this well and kind of beautiful minding, swizzling this whole big concept and then distilling it down into an easy way to understand it, an easy way to outline it to people. So the first goal for my current 12 week year is to outline the course. And then it tees up my next 12 week year, which is going to be draft or record the lessons for the online course. My third high value activity is to draft my next book. And this is about 20% complete. And I'm actually doing, I'm actually co-authoring this with two other people, two of my former colleagues. And it's going to be a book about private equity firms and deciding if you want to take on private equity investment, if you're running a business, or if someone at your, at your company has decided to partner with private equity and you want to know what that means for you, if you're on a leadership team or management team, then I'm drafting this book with, with two of my colleagues. And the cool thing about that is the way we're doing it is we're having a series of Zoom calls and I'm hosting them and kind of moderating them or teeing them up and asking certain prompts and questions. And then I'm working with an editor to actually formalize the structure and get the information in a certain sequence. So draft the next book for this 12 week year is to get those recordings done. So to get those Zoom, Zoom calls finished with my, with my co-authors. So we're making progress, but we still have a little bit of ways to go with that one. Okay, some kind of logistical takeaways here. Um, so I have a wall calendar. So it shows all 12 months of the traditional year, and it just sits on my wall and I can see the whole year at once, which I like. And what I did here is I highlighted the, the 12 weeks, um, the 12 week groupings. So I put a big border around those. So I kind of see, okay, I think of this chunk as a year, and then I think of this chunk as the next year. And that just helps my brain click into the 12 week year mentality. Another takeaway is I found notebooks or notepads rather on Amazon, and I love them. So these aren't like a full notepad, like a yellow legal pad. They're, I think they're eight by 10, but they're small enough to just sit right on my desk in front of me, which I have this all day long right in front of me. And I'll, I'll describe what's on it here. It has two columns and on the upper left-hand side, it says top three. And that's where I put my top three goals. So my high value activities, and I hand write these every day. So every day I'm reminding myself and I have it right in front of me, what I should be pointing at. Then underneath the top three on the left-hand side, you've got a to-do list. So just traditional kind of line and a checkbox. And that's where I say, okay, for this day tight compartment, what do I need to do to hit these three goals? So every day at the beginning of each day, I'll just take literally like two or three minutes to write out my top three and then think through what I need, what I need to do for, for today. On the right hand side is a column for schedule. And this has time slots from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I actually don't use this. I don't fill this in each hour. So what I'm going to do each hour, I have that on my online calendar. But what I do here is I say, if I have a strategic block today, then I'll, I'll outline that on my notepad and say, okay, I know from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm going to be doing a strategic block and I'm going to be doing this activity in my strategic block. So I have that right in front of me. And then there's this just general notes section on the bottom. And I like having that right in front of me because as things pop up throughout the day or I have ideas or I have little side to do's, I can write those down quickly and get them out of my head. So for instance, items where, ooh, that's not a high value activity, but it is something I need to do. I might jot that down in the note section and then when I have a buffer block, that I'll hit some of those low value activities and knock them out. At the end of the day, I usually have a handful of notes and I'll either 
move this to something I have online. So a system or a tracking, something I have online, or I'll send someone an email or send someone a message, do some light research on Google about something, and then all those go away. But it's not some, it's not like I'm creating, oh my gosh, another to-do list down here. It's just quick notes that I have throughout the day. All right. So that has been the 12 week year. Let me know what you think. And if you happen to implement these, I'd be really interested to know how it works for you, what tools you use, what goals you have. And if you want to talk about any of that or get help with any of that, then please let me know. But this has been another book club episode on leveraging leadership. If you'd like some more information on the topic discussed in this episode, head over to nextlevel.coach and click on the resources page for some helpful free downloads.